Hi, I'm Linda Murphy. I'm running for State Superintendent of Schools. It's wonderful to be back in Tulsa today and among a lot of people that I know and some new faces as well. But uh, first of all, I just want to thank Steve Anderson for coming today and giving us a great taste of what can be done in state government to make things more efficient, more effective, and to really provide better service to the citizens of Oklahoma. Uh, a couple of years back, Steve and I became acquainted and we got to know each other through a lot of discussion and found that we both really agree on the basics that we need to do in education and in the state. So together with Bob Daney, who's back here today with me, uh, Bob is my campaign manager. Steve, Bob and I formed a corporation, Limited Liability Corporation, to work together in an organization we call uh, GPS, which is Guidance and Policy Solutions. That was back in February, March, I think. Uh, and so, not too long after that, I'm finding that I really feel that I've got to run for state superintendent because I see that our state superintendent is not fulfilling the leadership role that we need in the state of Oklahoma. Through nine days of walkout slash strike, for those teachers that were told not to walk, yep. their school board voted for them not to walk. They did not close the school. And one of those schools was Western Heights in Oklahoma City. The superintendent was really chastised for standing with the school board and not allowing the teachers just to leave. Said, we need to stay here. We need to have school. Those teachers, a few of them, left anyway, so they were on a strike. They went against their board. Others technically were walking because the board allowed them the days off. So we have a real mixed bag about what happened, but my point here today is that my opponent, the current state superintendent, Joy Hoffmeister, received $150,000 in a dark fund in her first election from the OEA. Yep. Now that is documented in the affidavit filed by the DA in Oklahoma County. He filed several felony charges against her. Now he did not proceed with action in a timely manner to take that to hearing. He said, I'm not going to proceed with this now, but I have further investigation to do. Now if you saw her press conference, you would think the charges were dismissed, everybody was cleared, and it's over. But that is not what the DA in Oklahoma County said. So will further uh, effort be made there? I don't know. So that's not my issue today. My point today is you can't receive $150,000 from an entity that goes to your benefit to get elected and not have some uh, obligation toward them in your own mind and in their mind. So when Alicia Priest, the president of OEA, the teachers union, was holding the mic and demanding, demanding, demanding from our legislators money that didn't exist at that moment, more beyond what the teacher pay raise was even uh, put into place before the walkout, and she was standing there, she was interviewed by several people in the press, in the mainstream press, and they were even asking her, pretty hard pressed those last few days, what is it you're demanding now? And she couldn't answer, she wouldn't answer, because really, don't we know it was a political game? It was a political uh, show to get a lot of people upset that our Republicans don't care about public ed, they don't care about teachers, they don't care about children. Well, we know that is not true, and I'm here to say I am a teacher. I was certified, I have been certified for 30 years by the State Department of Education. I taught in public school in Caddo County. I also taught in Osage County for a while, and I taught special education, uh, certified in two areas of special ed and in elementary ed, K through eighth grade. After I taught in public school, then I went into a private clinical setting where I worked with students that had visually related learning problems. 
a lot of children that are labeled as learning disabled actually had very poor muscle control of their eyes. They were skipping words, losing their place, getting confusing input. So we really weren't even checking, and still are not, checking vision and uh, the function of vision. We were checking to see if they see clear at 20 feet, and then they have 20-20. But that doesn't mean your eyes work well developmentally, the muscle control of the eyes, the eye-hand coordination. I could give you a couple of days speech about that, but I'll just say that's what I did for 10 years. I traveled around the United States and spoke and uh, was a liaison for a foundation while I directed a clinic in Oklahoma City where I worked with students that had visual learning problems. Uh, this foundation was for research and for uh, education for people around the United States that worked with these problems. So I spoke to big conferences of doctors and a vision therapist, teachers that were in that field around the country. So in 1994, I ran for state superintendent. Uh, to fast forward to that, after I, I had had speaking experience, I found myself in my local community just trying to be a mom, not even teaching in the classroom at that point, had a one-year-old at home. I found that I was on a committee where we were charged with putting outcomes-based education in our school. We were a pilot school for OBE, which was part of House Bill 1017. Now we want to talk about taxes and tax raises and money for education. Uh, Tom Pate, who was the chairman of the group that uh, got 640 passed, where we have the constitutional requirement for 75% of the legislature to be required to, to vote to pass taxes. That was put into the Constitution by a friend of mine and his, his allies and friends. Some others are, are still living. He was an older man when I met him, a wonderful former school teacher, very much for public education but he saw through what was happening with a continual money game without improvement with taxes and that there would be no end to that. So my teaming up with Bob Daney and uh, Steve Anderson was in the area of education. We know that it's a huge portion of our state budget every year. And we know that the State Department of Ed, like other agencies, have not been fully evaluated, audited, and cleaned up from one party rule from statehood. Now, we've had a couple of Republican state superintendents, but their time was very much focused on, and still is with Joy Hoffmeister, very much focused on bringing in a new agenda for education. Right now, and we know that Janet Barisi's agenda was not well received. Obviously, she lost in a big way in that election in 2014 to Joy Hoffmeister. But if you want to read the affidavit about who lined up to help Joy Hoffmeister get elected, I don't find her at any of the Republican events where I go statewide. I don't find her there at all. And she's in this race right now. So there will be a big money machine again. I would assume there would be more uh, thought about how they proceed this time, but there will be a big money machine. So I need help to win this race. Please help, you know, any way you can. I have a website, votelindamurphy.com. You can donate there, you can volunteer there, you can get a lot of information about me and uh, share that, and that will help the more we network statewide. But I'm running against Joy Hoffmeister not just because of what I know was not uh, the way that someone should get elected. No one should be beholden to any entity, whether it's a union or any other outside organization, when you're an elected official. You represent the people of the state who elect you. That's what you should represent. So my basic platform is going to come in direct opposition to what Joy Hoffmeister is doing now. I'm for local control, local control of education. That's number one. We've got to know that if we don't have local control, then we've got an outside force or entity making decisions for us. And right now we have nationalized testing 
that under Joy Hoffmeister she has put into place the NAEP, National Assessment of Education Progress. That is the Federal Department of Education testing. We just repealed Common Core because we didn't have control of that. Those standards were copyrighted from the National Governors Association and from the Council of Chief State School Officers. So we repealed Common Core in 2014. And I was part of that battle along with Rhonda Bolliman Smith and others in this room. We worked hard to help our legislators understand the need to get out of that Common Core State Standard mandate that we had. And most schools walked away from it gladly. Tulsa did not. Tulsa Superintendent Keith Ballard said, we're going to keep doing it, Common Core, and they are. So Tulsa is an exception, and there probably are maybe 15 around the state out of the 500 plus schools that exist. So it's not mandated, they don't have to do it, but that is happening with some. On the national level, there's an organization called Council of Chief State School Officers. And every state superintendent we've had, at least in the last 25 years, has belonged to that. And that is another source of agendas, plans, big programs that get enforced as an experiment in our schools. That's something that I think we can just eliminate the cost of, of being a participant in these experimental programs that we then turn around and evaluate teachers on their performance and a lot of them are saying from the beginning this isn't going to work I'm not going to get to teach reading the way I know I need to teach reading and so my second letter here learn the second letter after local control L is education excellence that will come with letting teachers teach we have to let teachers teach. It's a simple thing to say, but it isn't being done everywhere right now. Some schools are, and especially some of the rural schools are pretty much in a traditional model of education, and so we need to know that. Uh, academic standards. We need academic standards, not standards for behavioral change. Not a state or federal government data collection system that tells us about student behaviors, attitudes, values, and beliefs. And if you think that would never happen or could never happen, it's already been developed and it's being implemented in some states. I just came back from uh, a couple of years back actually, went to Alabama where I was asked to come speak. Since we repealed Common Core here, they still haven't in most states. So I went to Alabama, I went to several places. Uh, there were a number of groups that came together and had me come there. When I left, they said, would you read this? And would you take this home and tell us what you think it is? And I'm, I'm saying to the lady that hosted, I said, you know, I don't wanna get into all of your business. I, I really think I just should stay with Common Court. But I took it home, looked at it. It was a comprehensive health plan, mental health plan. And it had objectives, goals, specifically for every individual student. And that would come from their assessments that were done via computer. It was all computer coded, and it even said that it was to change attitudes, values, and beliefs. So who decides this? What, what is a good value, attitude, belief, worldview? Uh, we don't want the government in this. So we've got to have local control, education excellence, academic standards, and we've talked a lot about returning money to the classroom. That's something I've said for a long, long time, not just since the walkout, and we need to do that now. I believe I can do that. I need your help and support, and it will take a mandate from the people to go in and have any power to do anything with the governor that appoints the school board and we don't know who our governor will be. We hope it'll be a Republican, but even so, Mary Fallon is a Republican, and she brought us the national governor's plan, which is what we fought in the 90s. It was really the same thing renamed. OBE and Common Core are cousins. 
School to work and America works are cousins. So I just say we can use our VOTEC system, workforce development. We can do these things, but let's own it and let's decide. Right. We've got enough intelligent people to do that. Thank you. you